Time ticks forward in English. But did you know in Mandarin, earlier is up and later is down? Or that the Yucatec Maya have no word for before or after? These sound like the kind of fun facts you share with a friend and then move on. But for linguists, time is at the center of a major debate. Are there languages out there where time just doesn't work like we think it does? There's a linguist who spent his entire career documenting and trying to understand one language, Hopi. After four years of fieldwork in Arizona on the Third Mesa, surely he has real insights to share about every aspect of the language. And yet in this long book he focuses on just one, Hopi time. Over 600 pages of Hopi time, with example after example of how, just like English, Hopi has words for time, like later or temporarily. The Hopi count days. They use terms like over there as spatial metaphors for time. And their verbs have tenses. They can mark the future with ni. Time, time, everywhere time. Okay, so the Hopi can tell time. What's the big deal? Well, it must have mattered to someone, because linguists and psychologists and people who'd never heard a word of Hopi in their lives grabbed the book and held it high as proof that time was universal for humans. And then they cursed the name of Worf. Worf was wrong. Worf was a charlatan. Worf was a con man. Hold on, what's the fuss? Whoever said that the Hopi don't think about the past, present, and future? Plus, who's this Worf, and why is he getting picked on so much? Worf was a fire inspector, but one with a unique hobby, Udo Aztecan languages. This curiosity led him to Sapir, who took Worf under his wing. Psst, hey, I've got some literature that'll blow your mind. See, Humboldt and Boaz taught us how different cultures subconsciously categorize the world based on language. But I think there's more. I think people are at the mercy of language. We're not living in the objective world, man. We're living through our language. Uh, what an odd idea. But as Worf turned to another Euro Aztecan language, he started to see it. Hopi seemed so un-European to him in the way it handled time. There was no substance called time. No timeline that could be cut and counted. No space as a metaphor for time, as if you could move through time. Not even a past, a present, or a future tense. The more Worf studied Hopi, the more he concluded that the arrow of time isn't something that exists in our objective world. Instead, we think about time this way because we speak standard average European. The Hopi don't share our concept of time because they speak Hopi. How do the Hopi live without tense? Well, for Worf, Hopi time is about cycles, rituals, mental preparation for key events. Above all, they have no objective time. Sapir died at age 55, and Worf joined him a couple years later, aged 44. But his ideas were captivating. Do people think about time differently in different languages? Does your language shape your concept of time? Does the language you speak determine whether or not time even exists for you? These claims, from weak to strong, got the nickname Sapir Wharf, which I often hear pronounced Saper Wharf. Hopi time became its poster child. And an ever-growing big fish tale, Hopi is innocent of a category for time. And no worse, our concept of time would be incomprehensible to them. Better yet, the reason you have clocks and watches is because you aren't Hopi. And my favorite, Hopi time makes for better family therapy than the Aristotelian reality Western parents are stuck in. So now do you see the power of these 600 pages spent vanquishing Worf and mainstreaming Hopi? Linguists had had enough. Many of them wanted to focus on what made language universal and innate to all of us. Stop parading around Hopi as an exotic oddity. We all think the same way. We just express ourselves with a little linguistic flair. So then, time is time is time. It's settled. Not quite. Dot dot dot. Years after Hopi time, researchers claimed they'd found new evidence showing Worf was right about time all along. Like this set of experiments playing on the difference between how English and Mandarin speakers use space to talk about time. Earlier is to your left and later to your right in English. 
but in Mandarin things can get vertical. Earlier is up and later down. Even though these experiments were conducted entirely in English, native Mandarin speakers were quicker to answer simple questions about earlier or later after being primed with vertical cues, while native English speakers were faster after horizontal cues. Thinking about time, it seemed, was shaped by language. The masses were intrigued, myself included. Someone passed me a link to it in my work inbox years ago, and I wasn't even working with linguists. But in the comments of my old video about Worf, a researcher did mention having trouble replicating these results. From what I've read since then, that commenter isn't alone. Still, it was just one of the many Worf-like effects that kept making the news. Some from scientific tests in the lab, others from fieldwork on the ground. So in the central Andes, there's a language spoken by millions called Aymara. In Aymara, your Naira, your I, is in front of you and your kipa, your back, is behind you. That's normal, but this isn't. When talking about time, the Aymara speak as if they face the past, but they have their backs to the future. They even point behind their backs to gesture into the future. So their eyes are exactly where your eyes are, but their past is not where your past is. Rare, unique. But there's something else about Aymara and Hopi. At second glance, some linguists tell us both of them are best viewed as tenseless. Wait, there are timeless languages out there? Well, well kind of. Tenseless. It's not as odd as it first sounds. We already know of languages that are uncontroversially tenseless. Take Yucatec Maya. Not only are they missing a past, present, and future tense, they even lack words like before, until, and after. How in the world do they talk about time? Well, strategies. Complex strategies like context and aspect. It could make a fun follow-up to dig into the mechanics of how tenseless languages talk about time. But good luck proving any of this makes them experience time in a fundamentally different way. Yucatec speakers do fine in experiments about linear time and any effects are subtle. See, if you read the research and not the breaking headlines, strong ideas of language determining time, those are out. Any ongoing debates are about subtler influences. In the end, languages do talk about time differently, but it's harder to get speakers to behave differently based on their language. But I'll level with you. I get the sense that trivia about time and tenses was never the point. Hopi time became a mascot for a grander idea, linguistic relativity. Or as Sapir put it, different societies live in distinct worlds, not merely the same world with different labels attached. That's an idea I suspect we'll run into again in the future. Until then, stick around and subscribe for language. <laughs>